Hey guys, I got a side of my house that's not producing anything for me and I never have enough compost, so I'm gonna make some compost bins out of pallets. It's already getting hot out here, but I got a lot of work done today. I got the framework of my new composting system up. It's just your basic, typical three bin uh, composter. and. Uh, the, the reason I'm doing this, I've learned about this from several different folks, and I'm going to be trying some new composting methods this year, um, and I need that side of my house to be cleared up for some of these methods. I'm going to be growing some uh, uh, melon pits. There is a fellow that if you don't follow him, you really should. His name is David the Good, and David really is actually uh, quite impressive. Um, he's got a method of using compost to uh, grow me melons that teaches us the principles that you can basically compost anything that has been recently alive. That means uh, your casserole dish, your macaroni and cheese, your chicken, rotten chicken in the back of the fridge, your rats that you've trapped in your Victor <laughs> rat trap, dead cats that happen to get eaten by dogs like I did one year, squirrels. Whatever it might be, you can compost it. The, the rules uh, of composting that we tend to follow are basically rules that are imposed upon us to have nice and tidy, clean compost piles that, um, that are you know, not offensive to your next door neighbor who's uh, six feet over, but there are ways you can compost all this stuff that are actually really, uh, really helpful to your garden and add lots of nutrients that uh, are not offensive and do not uh, offend your uh, non-gardening neighbors. So I have all these pallets. They're sitting back here on the side of my house. This is the south side. Gets a lot of sun. I've planted um, these flowers over here. I've had sunflowers over here do really well. And I thought, you know, I need to just clear this out and make it useful. My problem is, and I think every gardener's problem is, we don't have enough compost. I never have enough compost. And I've seen guys make uh, you know, compost bins out of pallets. Well, I've got a bunch of pallets here that aren't doing anything. So I'm going to put a three bin system in here and make myself some compost bins. And we're going to up our compost production this year. These are some very old pallets and they're not ideal for what, what I'd like to do, but they're what I've got. And so I'm gonna use these pallets. They're a little bit rotten and broken down, but they're gonna to have to do because that's what I've got on hand. Now I used to compost over here, so there's some good soil down at the bottom. And these boards have been rotting, so the soil's already kind of charged and inoculated to give me some good compost. So I'm going to use this uh, baling wire. This is actually Soviet era Russian wire that I got in some surplus kit that I bought for a, for a rifle and, and dig in kit. But uh, yeah, this is a pretty good wire and I'll just be wiring my, my uh, pallets together with this stuff and that way I can take it apart easily. I don't have to worry about screws and about nails and all that kind of stuff. Alright, so the next day I've got my structure built, I've sourced a, a board there to uh, serve as a door. I'm going to line my bed with this weed cloth, weed barrier. And the reason I'm going to line the bed with weed barrier is um, I just think it's good practice for, for my particular area. These rotten boards are falling apart, um, they're going to last me a year or two. This weed barrier will actually serve a structural function, this is real, real strong stuff. It'll help hold that together a little bit, and it'll also help keep my um, compost from falling out through those big holes. So I'm gonna put this on, line the inside with this, and then we're gonna load it up. Now, this section of the compost pile is the important part where I don't want stuff uh, going out between the boards, because when I get to this point of my three bin system this is where my finishing compost and my compost is going to finish off 
and this is where the gold will happen and I don't want any of it missing so this will come in handy and help me out now I'm a firm believer in scrounging and I have these uh, fiberboard plastic fiber I don't even know what they are some kind of resin these are four by four panels that I scavenged uh, from my father's swimming pool my father had an above ground uh, swimming pool as half a half in the ground half below the ground when I was a kid I helped him dig that hole and I remember putting these panels in when my dad moved he took that pool out and buried it in the hole but I went over and I picked up about a dozen of these and they've come in handy throughout uh, my gardening life they don't rot they don't uh, they don't break down they're fabulous so I'm gonna use one of these as my door and uh, to keep all this stuff in all right on the bottom I'm just gonna put a bunch of cardboard mainly because one of the things I have trouble finding in my compost piles is carbon cardboard makes great carbon So that's the first thing that goes into this compost pile a bunch of cardboard I'm not gonna shred it don't have to the worms will do that for you but I'm gonna put a bunch of cardboard in here got a bunch of cardboard newspaper new uh, brown paper from your Amazon packing a bunch of uh, old egg cartons these are great source of carbon for your for your compost pile so we'll throw those in these these compost really quick and the worms love them so what all this cardboard is gonna do it's gonna draw up worms from my uh, from my natural environment here you notice I'm, car I'm composting directly on the ground of my natural environment. And that's because I want what's in my ground to come up and help break the stuff down. Now they say, oh, don't use glossy paper. Friends, I have 30 years of experience in the design industry. And back in the old days when we used to do uh, everything on uh, paste up boards and everything, uh, we would go press check and we'd go to paper shows and paper houses. People try to sell us paper. All the glossiness is on paper is a varnish that breaks down very easy and most coated papers are coated with clay it's just clay so you're usually good to use uh, coated cheap coated paper in your compost pile now I wouldn't go putting in here laminated things that are glossy shiny and feel like they've got a coating of plastic on it but uh, even if you use that you can come back and sift it out later so don't be so so caught up in all the rules I got a phone book here this is worm food. David the Good talks about composting phone books, junk mail, and all kinds of things like that. Who uses a phone book anymore, man? We got smartphones. So I'm gonna put this in my compost pile. And that's good worm food. All right, what we have here, I'm putting some, some uh, everything I took out of this area is going right back into my compost. That's a bunch of brush, a bunch of woody stems, a bunch of nitrogen in those leaves. And so I'll weigh those down with some bricks or some something, figure something out. But I want to put all that back in here. And so every piece of waste that comes out of my yard is going into that compost bin now. Because, man, I need this stuff to, uh, I, I need a lot of compost. And I think this is going to do it. <laughs> my neighbor's tree, big old palm tree got killed they topped it off and if you top off a palm tree it's only got one growth bud growth bud and so if you top it off it's gonna die well they they trimmed a little heavily and it did die and a storm pushed it over and I got six feet of it in my yard so that's free compost right there free compost and mulch look at this the inside of this tree is already starting to break down that's what we want right there now palm trees, the outside, the limbs, the fronds, uh, they take a little longer to break down. So uh, the toughest parts of that palm tree I'm going to leave out. And, uh, but I'm going to put that inner, inner goodness right in here and uh, help kickstart this compost. I'll show you some other things I'm going to stick in here as well. They say when you compost boxes, to take all these, uh, these uh, shiny stickers off and take off all the tape. That's a good practice if you got time for that because it's gonna to have to come out eventually. But uh, the way I figure, if it's not too much, I just leave it on there. Because it's gonna sift out when I sift it. I pick all that stuff out and I'll have to work with peeling it off and all the frustration trying to take tape off a box. Man, just compost that stuff. And uh, once it's all down in there and composted down, when you sift that compost, when it's done, you'll be able to just pick that stuff uh, real easy, no problem. 
All right, this is a good start. I'm real happy about this. All, all this goodness is biomass from my other compost piles. My uh, system I had over there was just a couple of bins. And it worked well for me. I got about uh, 50, 60 gallons of compost every year, but that's just not enough. And so I'm going to transfer it to this one and we'll see if, see if we can't make a little bit uh, better progress. I mean, just one hand right there. Kitchen scraps, roly poly doodle bugs in there doing their business. There's a earwig down in there. Yeah, we're already on a good start here. This will help inoculate this uh, compost pile and weigh it down. I'll put two or three loads of this in there. Here are my old beds. I have two of these hoops. I'm going to take all of this one and put it in my new system. I'm going to leave this one for now because that's all my mulch. That's mostly oak leaves, and oak leaves are very good mulch. So I'm not going to compost that. They're, they're composting there uh, very slowly. But uh, I'm going to leave those, but take all this. I don't know if the light's too bright, but all in here, I've got some good fungi going. All that white stuff, that's doing the work for you. Good stuff. Don't be alarmed if you see that kind of stuff in your compost. That means you're doing it right. Now obviously kitchen scraps are some of the best compost you can get and here we got some uh, scraps from last night's dinner, coffee, eggshells, a uh, little bit of my herb trimmings, a little bit of everything in here. Some cuttings from uh, Mother's Day flowers, it's all in here, this is good stuff. But uh, you know you want to put this in your, in your compost, since I don't have a cover on this one I'm going to put this in now and cover it up with some of my older compost just to be on the safe side. Not that it matters, an animal gets in there and uh, stirs it up he's doing some work for me too so don't really care now look at this mess this is what david the good calls fetid fertilizer basically it's an anaerobic process that breaks down weeds i've got a perpetual spinach root in there a bunch of soil some weeds uh, a little bit of everything some of that palm some mushrooms some kitchen waste it smells awful. It's really rank, but it's really good stuff. Now you wouldn't want to put this directly on plants that you're going to eat, but you could fertilize your soil with this stuff, or you can put it in your compost to help kickstart your compost. So that's what I'm going to do with some of this stuff. Uh, it's pretty rank. So if you're concerned about that, take precautions. <clears throat> oh, it smells absolutely like nutrition. I just let this sit here and go fetid. I love that word. Well, there we go. Yeah, we got some compost going now. That's good stuff. That makes me real happy. Hopefully we can bulk up our compost production here, use the, the materials that are on site here so I don't have to trust bringing in stuff from outside that I don't know where it came from, I don't know what's been sprayed on it. This will really help me. So from now on, all my lawn clippings will go into this, all my Amazon boxes will go into this, any kind of compostable material will go into this. I'll be putting organic stuff, meat, bones, the stuff you're not supposed to compost, it's all going in there. Cause you could compost that stuff don't don't let the rules scare you um i've composted kittens squirrels the kittens met an unfortunate demise wasn't my fault uh, squirrels birds all kinds of stuff and you can put it in there yeah it might stink but man it's worth it so uh yeah every lawn clip i'll have to have this thing filled up to the top by the end of the summer and as it works down at the at the end of the summer i'm gonna be uh, turning it unless it unless it surprises me and works faster uh, which it might but I'm going to turn it into the next bin and then we'll keep adding to this one. So that's the idea, to speed up the process and uh, have a 
a bigger supply of, of compost. Hey, thanks for joining me today on Black Gumbo. Please subscribe if you haven't already. That really encourages us. Uh, like us on Facebook and on Instagram, and we'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.